In this video, we're gonna continue comparing the MacBook Pro with the Core i9 processor, 64 gigs of RAM, the 16 inch version, to the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And what we're doing today is looking at a JavaScript benchmark. So I've already done a couple of videos of real world scenarios here using JavaScript and comparing these two and the M1 was a clear winner in that one. But if you came to the live stream the other day and you saw me run the benchmark, the benchmark is just more intense. It pushes the CPU really hard all the way to the max. If you saw that one, then you saw that the M1 comes in just behind the Core i9. And a lot of you had some comments about why that might be happening. So in this video, I'm gonna run the benchmark. We're gonna pick one of the algorithms available. It's gonna be kicking the CPUs pretty hard. We're gonna compare these two machines. And I'm also gonna test this on the Dell XPS 13, which I have not seen the results for yet. So that's gonna be interesting to find out just to see how it compares with the M1 and with the Core i9. And we'll also take a look at a commenter that uh, ran some of their own tests as well and shared them on the live stream. Allison Moshni is the commenter who used the 2017 MacBook Pro 13 inch with dual core i5 7360U CPU. So that's what we're working with today. Now, one other note about this benchmarks here. I'm using this website where people contribute their different benchmarking code bases. So these are just um, different languages that we have available here. As you can see, we have JavaScript. That's what we're doing today. We also have C Sharp, Swift, and so on, a lot of other ones. They're implementing the same algorithm. So if we go into JavaScript, for example, here's Regex, Redux, Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot is a mathematician who came up with fractals. You might've seen those cool pictures. And this generates that in a <laughs> console log kind of fashion. So that's a pretty intense algorithm. We ran that in the live stream. Then there's this one, Fankook Redux. If anybody out there speaks German, I believe that means pancakes. I don't know. Let me know down below if you speak German, if that's what it means. And there's a bunch of other algorithms here. So one note about this is right at the top, it says, should we care? How could we know which language is the fastest? So they're trying to measure languages here, but I'm just using this as benchmarking tool because the code is there and it's written for me. And it says it's important to be realistic. Most people don't care about program performance most of the time. By instrumenting the runtime, we measure the JavaScript behavior of web applications. Our results show that real web applications behave very differently from the benchmarks. And that's why I try to do more realistic examples here on this channel. But sometimes you wanna see the benchmarks as well. And as we can see, the behaviors of these are gonna be different in a real world scenario versus a benchmark scenario. Let's begin. I'm going to go to JavaScript. We're gonna go to Fankook Redux. I'm gonna click on Node.js and there's the source code right there. This gives you the code in JavaScript and this tells you how to run the code. An example of that right there. So really handy website if you've never checked it out. Let's copy that code and let's go here. Let's make a directory for that project. I'm gonna call it Pancake. Let's create a file called index.js and I'm gonna open that up in VS Code. Now I'm gonna paste in the code I copied and save that file. There it is. Now in order to run this code, according to the instructions, we need to pass in a parameter, which is a number. And I happen to know the higher the number, the longer it's gonna take. So I'm gonna run this index as a test at a pretty low number. Let's give it 10 and there we go. Now, if I wanna time this, I'm gonna run node index JS and I'm gonna pass in that parameter and there is our time output. So this is the time that it took. And thanks to Brian Chauvin for pointing out that this is the actual time that it took to run that application during the live stream. Now, if I run this for 11, you can see that it's taking slightly longer and then it increases exponentially from there. There we go. All right, so that's the MacBook Pro with a Core i9 all set up and ready to go. Let's see this in action on the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. I'm gonna go over to our JavaScript examples, Node.js, 
there's our benchmark and I'll do the exact same thing here. I'll copy the code and I'm gonna use the orange Visual Studio code. Ooh, the experimental build. I'm being daring here. Hey, give me some credit. I'm taking a risk. This is a high stakes game here. Who knows, this program might crash on me while I'm pasting in the code. I really doubt that. It seems actually pretty stable. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my video on VS Code and the different versions. You'll see that now we have the blue icon VS Code, the green one, and the orange one. The orange one is for the ARM processors. For now, I don't know, maybe they'll change the color later. All right, so I've saved that file. Let's make sure that everything runs. Time, node, index, pass in 10, and it runs. And now we're ready for our test. So we're gonna run this with parameter 13, which is gonna take just over a minute to run. We'll edit out the waiting time or speed it up so you don't have to watch it for the whole time. And uh, we'll see what the result is. One other thing I want you to know is that on the MacBook M1, the node version is 15 because that's the one that now supports ARM. I went ahead and installed Homebrew for ARM support node with arm support because if it's out might as well use it so when i did run this there was a slight difference between running this in node emulation mode under rosetta with version 14 of node versus the arm version of node which came in actually a little bit faster all right so we're gonna go ahead and run this ready go while that's running i believe the result for the m1 under node 14 which it was not arm it was under Rosetta, that process took one minute, 26 seconds. And I ran that several times and kept getting about the same result. And that's why I'm confidently telling you that. Now this one is gonna be faster because this is gonna be node running under ARM. So all native process. If we take a look at activity monitor, you'll see that the CPU is being pegged at 746% and Node is running under Apple architecture. Here on the MacBook Pro, the CPU is also being maxed out. There it is. And of course, the MacBook Pro's fans kicked on. It's getting warmer. But this one, this one's still cool. Amazing, I don't know how they do that. Okay, here are the results. MacBook Pro, one minute, seven seconds for that test. MacBook Air with the M1, one minute, 13 seconds. So we shaved off about 13 seconds on the M1 by using the ARM version of Node, but it's still not as fast as the Core i9 in this case. There you go, not a real world scenario, but a benchmark test. We're about to do this on the Dell XPS 13 as well. Now, before we get into the Dell, let me read the comment here from Allison Moshni, who said that they ran the the same exact algorithm, and it was a entry-level late 2017 MacBook Pro 13-inch with dual-core i5, and the scores 21 seconds for that test with 12 as the parameter, where in my case, on my machines, the M1 finished it in five seconds, and the i9 finished it in 3.7 seconds. It's an older machine, so it's to be expected. And then Allison goes into some detail and breaks down why this happens and the theory behind the number of cores used and how many performance co cores are being used versus efficiency cores and the math behind it, which kind of escapes me. I understand what I'm following and reading along, but I'd rather just point you to the comment and let you make your own conclusions instead of me trying to read the whole thing to you and confusing the issue possibly. All right, so let's get the Dell XPS 13 and try the same test. Here it is, XPS 13. Now this one has Core i7 right there. It says Evo. Now, if you ask me, in my opinion, the marketing team at Dell came up with that after they heard that Apple was coming out with something new. I don't know. Maybe Evo really does mean that the whole system works better together as an integrated thing. In my opinion, it's just marketing. All right, so I've got the JavaScript file all set up and ready to go. I'm just gonna give it a little test right now with a parameter 10. And I'm using measure command, which is a PowerShell commandlet that already comes with PowerShell. You just pass in the process that you want and it'll spit out the time. Kind of like the time command on Unix. So I'm gonna run this with the parameter 13. You know what, let's run it with 12 as well. So we have that comparison too. And while that's happening, I'm gonna run it with 12 again on the M1, just so we have that, because it doesn't take that long. And 
The result is on the M1. That process took 5.104 seconds. And on the Dell XPS, it took 6.78 seconds. So just a little bit longer on the Dell. Let's do our 13 parameter. And we'll measure that one on the Dell. Now, by the way, this little Dell is a little bit smaller than the MacBook Air. It's also 13 inch. It's got smaller bezels, so it does look more modern. And it's actually been a really nice machine. It feels good, it's light, it's easy to carry. It also feels really solid. I was pretty impressed with it. I would actually use this as my dev machine if the screen wasn't so small. So maybe I would go for the 15 version if I were to get one for myself, just because I prefer larger screens. But it's pretty well built and I kind of like it. If I were to get a Windows machine, this might be it, but uh, I am open to testing more Windows machines as well and doing these comparisons. So if there is one that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. All right, so we are running here and it's taken some time to do that. Okay, it's done. Just to remind you, with the 13 parameter on the Apple MacBook Air M1, it took one minute, 13 seconds. Here, this one turns out to be the slowest on the Dell at one minute, 35 seconds. So there's that test for you. Now we kind of have some information about four different machines. And that's it for me for today. If you like this kind of video or if there are any other algorithms you want me to benchmark here in other languages, let me know in the comments as well. And thanks again for coming and watching this. And I appreciate you all and I'll see you in the next video.